Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Wall Street Report. I'm Jennifer Schoenberger. If you'd sold in May and gone away, you'd have seller's remorse. Standard & Poor's 500 stock index has advanced for seven straight months without a pullback, the longest stretch since September 2009. So far this year, the market has been able to shrug off bad news from potential instability in Italy to slowing growth in China, so much so that traders have deemed the market the Teflon market. No bad news sticks. But a word on the street is it could be time to turn cautious. This is a momentum-driven market based on Federal Reserve stimulus, not fundamentals. The Fed has built this rally and can drain the gains as fast as they brew them. Just talk of dialing back the central bank's billions of dollars worth of bond purchases caused bond yields to rise and rattled stocks. Here's why. On its face, if the Fed pulled back on buying bonds, it would be a good sign the economy could stand on its own. But let's get real. Unemployment is way too high for the Fed to pull out now, yet stocks and bonds have become far overpriced as investors reach for yield. The disconnect between the economy and the stock market has grown even more pronounced in recent months. As the market makes new highs almost daily, the economy remains weak and corporate earnings have become a joke. The Fed is aware of the brewing bubbles and the potential danger they pose. The central bank knows letting bubbles fester for too long can spell trouble for the economy. So they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, and time is running out. Near zero interest rates and quantitative easing is driving the stock market and home prices higher. That's supposed to make businesses and people want to borrow, invest, and spend more. But here's the rub. Incomes aren't increasing. For this to work, people need money to spend. Instead, they're dipping into their savings. The savings rate now stands at 2.3%. That's down from 6% at the height of the recession. Corporations are more focused on buying back shares and increasing dividends than investing in property, plant, and equipment or hiring. Quite frankly, this shouldn't be surprising. With 2% GDP growth, hiring won't increase by any measurable amount. The aggregate demand just isn't there. For now, the market is a slave to Fed stimulus, which is based on the strength of economic data. But if stock and bond prices become overheated, the Fed could be forced to pull back on its purchases before the economy is ready. As long as there's uncertainty about the strength of the economy and whether and when the Fed will pull back, it will be a bumpy ride for investors. Folks, put on your seatbelts.